Hello, Christ United Methodist Church, friends and family. Pastor Jeremiah coming to this week's Upper Room Devotional. And it's titled A Genuine Faith and comes from Linda Harris from Virginia. And as I read her devotional today, I thought, wow, what an incredible message. What what some what an incredible thing for us to consider and think about, especially where we're gonna be completely honest with ourselves about who we are. Her scripture today says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. And what came to my mind as I was reading is this proverbial um, statement, you know, thinking about all these books that you see behind me. You know, you might not want to judge a book by its cover. We've all heard that, that cliche statement where, you know, sometimes the, the messed up, dusty, broken down book from the outside with a boring picture on the front might be one of the best books in the entire library to read. Um, or the image of a duck on a water. I can't really tell you how many times I think about this when somebody tells me, asks me, hey, how you doing? And the answer I give them is, I'm like a duck on the water. And depending on what you know about those ducks sitting on the water, you might think, well, what a tranquil idea. You ever look at a duck and see it out there on a pond just kind of sitting? It looks like it's just floating without a care in the world. What you may not know is underneath that water, just under the surface, those legs are going as fast as they can. And so you can't really judge what you see with your eyes as a true representation of what's really going on under the surface. It's the same thing with our walk as uh, people in Christ. Same thing with each of us in our own lives. How many times have you and men asked, hey, how you doing? And the answer you give is fine, doing just fine. Everything's great. When on the inside, you're tore apart. Things are going bad. You got things that you're worried about. You got family members that are you're concerned about or your own health is an issue. Just under the surface, you're anything but fine. But people look at you and you tell them, hey, I'm fine. You put on that strong uh, face for the world, but in the inside, you're completely going nuts. Just like that duck with its feet under the water. You may think everything's fine, but if you were able to look a little closer, you'd see things aren't the way they always seem. And it's the same thing that Linda's reminding us about our own faith journeys. You know, sometimes we look spiritually healthy on the outside. You might be the epitome of what everybody thinks. You might teach Sunday school or be sitting there in church and you're dressed all nice. You could be a priest wearing your clergy collar or you could be a pastor in your robe or, you know, be going to your Bible studies and doing all these things that make you look spiritually healthy. But on the inside, you're at a crisis of faith. You're wondering if God is even there or even worse, maybe you're even wondering if God even exists. Some of the strongest people who look like on the outside they're the strongest are the ones whose lives and faith fall apart when life gets tough. I've seen it happen a lot as a pastoral leader. I've seen people's lives turned inside out, upside down because of the stresses from this world and their spiritual health, though it looked good on the outside, really wasn't as well off as it may have seemed. We're oftentimes as human beings really good at putting on a false face. In fact, did you know that the word that we get the word person from is actually idea from a, from a word called persona? Or if you break that word down a little bit further, it's the masks that we put on. It's a, 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 a play term for drama. You know, you got to put on your right persona. <laughs> Smile face, sad face, clown face, whatever it is that you want the world to see. So the very word person that we all are comes from a dramatic idea that each and every one of us puts on our best face for the world. And we're oftentimes really not revealing the truth to those we encounter, no matter what we may demonstrate to others. So with that, with our faith journey and our personal lives and our family lives, we all just kind of want to act like everything's okay. When in reality, <clears throat> we're all hurting. We're all broken. We're all struggling in one way or another. And maybe the next time somebody asks you, hey, how you doing? Imagine what it would be like to be honest. That might make this devotion come alive a little bit more for you. And uh, Linda is really just talking about the same thing from her own experience. Let's look at the devotion a little closer. 
The CT technician test stepped from behind the glass partition. As I sat up to leave, she approached me with a few questions. You have clips in your chest from open heart surgery? Yes, I replied. And you have a total hip replacement? Again, I answered yes. Finally, she asked, and you have a permanent colostomy? Well, yes, I do. She looked shocked and blurted out, but you look so good on the outside. I have laughed over this story many times in retelling it to my family. I may appear outwardly healthy, but inwardly I have signs of past surgeries and illnesses. As the technician saw me, I looked well and whole and strong. My outer appearance did not show what my inner body would reveal. As I considered this conversation again, I felt strong conviction. I might appear to be spiritually healthy, strong in my faith and obedient to God. But God is the only one who knows my heart, my thoughts, and my desires. And I want to I want what God sees and knows about me to match up with what I present to the world. Wow. How often do we, like Linda, present something else to the world around us? Is it really our heart that what's on the inside reflects what the world sees? We all have those things we'd rather keep secret, those issues we'd rather not deal with, those things maybe we're vulnerable or weak about. And Linda's reminding us that true strength would be putting those things out so people could see them and recognizing that maybe we need to look in the mirror ourselves and maybe be a little bit more honest with ourselves about who we really are and what we're really dealing with. That's a hard thing to consider or to think about. And the same thing goes not just for ourselves, as I was kind of alluding to how we kind of put on our best persona, that false face. Our churches do the same thing. Yep, I'm about to say something really hard. Every one of us could go into any church in our Oregon, East Toledo, Mark area, and they all look clean. They all look well decorated. They all look like from the from the average person walking in, it just looks like a church. But sometimes, sometimes our churches are filled with people who aren't very Christ-like. And I'm not talking about any specific church. I'm just talking about the average person in the pews or the average church. They might look good to the world on the outside, but they're far from those people who have their doors wide open to the hurting, the lost, the broken, the forlorn, the immigrant, um, the alien, the widow, um, or the young or the old, or, or those that are weakest in our society. In fact, the church really doesn't want to get too involved with any of that kind of stuff. Really, it's just about putting on the right programs, having the right worship center, having the pastor look and act and sound and talk the right specific way, putting on the right front for the world to see so it looks nice and clean and holy. But we got to remember, not just in our personal lives and not just in our churches, that the one that we seek to represent and represent to the world challenged the society around it, stood up for the lost, the hurt, the broken, the marginalized in our community, stood and took a political stand that was unpopular in his own time and place, challenged the power structure that was. This is who we're called to be. If you are a Christ way follower, we all have to look in the mirror just a little bit closer and maybe get a little bit more honest with ourselves and our churches about who we are and why we are in the world. What's our ministry? What's our vision? What's our purpose? Is it all about us, our comfort, our wants, our desires, the way we want things to be? Or is it about those who don't know God's love? Are we those who are willing to suffer for others to find comfort and love? Are we those who are willing to offer grace and kindness? Are we those who are broken for what breaks God? Are we kingdom builders working to build God's will on earth as it is in heaven? Or is it really just about the way we've always done things and the way we really want things to be? Who are you suffering for? These are some hard questions for our time and place, things that we need to continue to ask Across thousands of years, we have to wonder, who is it that we're being persecuted for? What about our faith is challenging the world around us? Are we those 
who are hurting and breaking for the things that God's hurting and breaking about? Are we being honest with the world around us? Or are we just putting on a good face for the world? It doesn't matter if it's a personal discussion with yourself looking in the mirror on your disciple's journey. Or if it's a pastor that needs to make sure he's looking in the mirror himself. Because believe me, I'm chief amongst sinners. Not preaching at anybody but myself here. Or are we just going through the motions? What is your faith really pulling out of you? How are you being challenged in your generosity, in your giving? How are you being challenged in your living in this life? How are you being challenged in this walk where you represent Christ in the world? You see, because we are Christ way followers, we are Christians, we are those who are actually in persona Christi, which is this fancy way of saying that we are to represent Christ in the world. When people look at us, they're supposed to see Jesus. Male or female, young or old, rich or poor, doesn't matter. We are all one in Christ. This is who people are supposed to see when they look at you, when they look at me, when they look at our churches. And of course, that's something that challenges the world around us. We have to be those who are not phony in our faith. We have to be those whose hearts are open wide, that we're vulnerable and we're broken and we're hurt and we're open with each other. We have to be those who bear one another up in love in the church, not just those that sit in your pews, but in every pew. We have to be those who are willing to risk for those who don't sit in the pews, <laughs> who are willing to challenge everything around us so that others may know the love that we know. It's tough. This is a tough message for us to have a genuine faith as Linda is challenging us to be open and vulnerable with the world around us and to challenge the people around us to be better to be more honest with themselves and with the world around them. And maybe if we can get to those truth-telling statements, to that vulnerability here first in our church at Christ United Methodist Church, maybe we can begin to change the world around us. And you watch. When other people in the world don't look at the church and think that we're those that got it all figured out. In fact, they see that the church isn't a place for the saints to gather, but instead is a hospital for the broken. Maybe the world would see the church as useful once again. I sit in the meetings. I know you do too. I know you wonder why church attendance is down, why churches are dying, why churches are closing all over the place. And it really comes down to the fact that the church for a long time, colloquially, colloquially speaking, <laughs> church for a long time has done really good at pretending like everything's just fine. It's not. This world is hurting and is more need of the message of Jesus Christ than ever before. Yet lots of times when people don't know that story, they look at the church and all they see is a bunch of people that are putting on a really good false face because they don't act anything like they do on Sundays, Monday through Saturday. So why bother? The question really boils down to this. What is your faith calling you to do or be in response to this good news message of Jesus Christ crucified, died, resurrected for you? God's love willing to die for you. How will you respond to the world? The call is that we are willing to sacrifice and suffer for others. If people saw that, I think this entire Christ way message would become desirable once again to a world that has kind of abandoned it. It starts with us. It starts with you looking at your neighbor, your church, your friends, your family, your church family and being honest so that we can help each other, so we can pull each other up, so we can bear one another up in patience and love and become a witness and a sign and a symbol in the world of what God is still doing in each of our lives, that God is living in and through each of us. 
and that this thing that we do called church, this thing that we do being disciples on a journey, that it actually changes us somehow from the inside out. It's genuine. It's authentic. It's real. And it's rooted in love. That's appealing. That changes lives. That will change your life. So I leave that with you as a challenge. Look in the mirror. Look close. Look at your churches around you and your community. Look at your own church. Are we really living a genuine faith? Or are we just going through the motions? If you see that we're going through the motions, if you see that you're going through the motions, break that cycle. Do something to change that. Challenge yourself to go one step further. Challenge your pastor. Challenge your church. Wherever you find yourself, try and represent Christ in the world the best way you can. Maybe what you see, others aren't seeing. And maybe it only takes one person, you, to speak out to make all the change in the world. I leave that with you in Christ's name. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, search our hearts. Show us how to align our hearts and our actions so that others may know we follow you. Give us courage to face this world unafraid and commitment in our desires to follow you. Hear us as we pray, not as Christ United Methodist Church or not just as those who are followers of your way as Christ's way followers, but hear each of our hearts, our prayers, our longings, our struggles, our suffering, and help us to be those who are willing to be vulnerable and to sacrifice our own comfort for others. In your gracious and holy name we pray. Amen. Have a good night. See you next week.